When researching an early U.S. Census records, you're going to run into a lot of problems if you do not have a plan. Many beginning genealogists struggle with the U.S. Census records made available between 1790 and 1840 because they don't identify everyone in the household. However, many of your brick walls are going to be busted when you can embrace and utilize these early census records. Now, while this video doesn't talk about how to research in early census records, you will explore how by watching the process. But if you want extra training on how to research your specific individual in early census records, check the description box for show notes. And on our blog, we'll have references to other resources that can give you the training you need. Now, before we dive in, I have a question of the day. And that question is, what are your most difficult challenges with early U.S. Census records? Put them in the comments or the live ch chat during the premiere, and I just might answer that in a future video. Now, if this is your first time here, welcome to Family History Fanatics. My name is Devin Noel Lee, and we love to teach you about DNA, climbing your family tree, and writing your ancestor stories. But we also love to give away things for free. So be sure to check that description box that I mentioned earlier for the show notes and the link to the free beginning genealogy busting guide that you won't want to miss when you're tackling difficult genealogy problems. Now, this video is actually part of a longer brick wall busting series. And in the previous two videos, I taught you about some of the clues that I found for my brick wall ancestor. I found a number of clues as to who, what the name of his birth father might be in death records. And then in utilizing descendancy research, I had an extra clue that leaned some support for that father's name being accurate, but I also picked up a potential birth location. So now I need to keep diving into records, particularly U.S. census records, to think, how am I going to find John Townley in early U.S. census records when his name is really common? <sighs> Well, utilizing some of the um, tips and tricks that I talk about in this video, I am going to start showing you how I found John Townley or what I believe is the John Townley in those ticks and tally census records. Now, if you have not watched those videos that I just talked about, head over to the show notes. When working with early U.S. census records, the advice from most expert genealogists is to work back through, backward through time. So even if we want to get to the 1840, 1830, and on back to 1790, you have to start with your most recent census records and move backward in time. And then you can dive in to those pre preceding records. Now, I had found John Townley in the census records from 1850 to 1880. Um, he's not in 1890, even though he was still alive, because the 1890 census fragments, the 7,000 or a little less than 7,000 names that survived, did not happen to include him. I have evidence that his third child, Joanna, was born in New Jersey, and his son, Richard, was born in Ohio. So this is the break where the family moved. So they were in New Jersey. Now this New York and this New York is a mistake because all other evidence points to New Jersey, not New York. So I'm going to hop over to Ancestry.com and I'm going to search for John Townley in the 1840 census using some of the clues that I have gathered about him so far. So here I am on the 1840 U.S. census record uh, search forum over on Ancestry, and I'm gonna type in Cincinnati, Ohio, another, no other details. I'm gonna cast a wide net and then narrow down as necessary. What's really cool is I see that there are 22 entries from around the country. There's two particularly in Cincinnati, and then there's New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and some other places as well. 
What you can also see is that Ancestry picks up the name Townley, but it also picks up the name Turnley. What's another spelling variation we see down here? Townley without an E, Townley without a W, Tinley, and various other spellings. There's even a Finley. I can still use some wildcard searching to see if there are other spelling variations. I'm going to do this. And now I have 35. And notice how I'm picking up some Towsley, Townsbury. So by using the wild cards, I've expanded my net by an additional 13 people. So let's go back to the results I had before and pay attention to some of these other things I've seen. Well, first of all, there's only two Townleys in Cincinnati and only one of them has the name John. Um, but we're picking up this name because there's the J and I don't have any filter set to make it so it will pick up any man named Townley. So that's a strategy we we're going to try a little bit later. So stay tuned for that. So now um, I'm going to start with the most obvious source first, and I'm going to look at John Townley. When we look at the this entry, this index, if that's the actual image we'll look at in a moment. When we look at the actual record here, we have one male under five, one 15 through 19, one 30 to 39, a female under five, two between 10 and 14, and one female 30 to 39. So there's a total of seven um, individuals in this household. At some point, we're going to have to start extracting the information from ancestry and processing it and ruling people in and ruling people out of the possibilities. So one of the tools you can use is data mining, especially if you have more than 22 possibilities to consider. So be sure to check the links in the show notes for how to use data miner to pull information out. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to go back to the research plan we talked about in a previous video. And we're going to think, what is the family makeup for John. And once we know what his family would look like, now we can compare it to the possibilities that are over on Ancestry. John was born about 1801, so he's going to be about 39 years old. His wife, 1802, so she's going to be about 38. And then the children that could be in this family in 1840, depending on when their birthday is, all of them live after 1840. There's no one deceased. So Eliza is going to be about 16. Asa is going to be 15. Johanna is going to be about 13. Um, Richard is going to be three. And Mary Jane is going to either not have been old enough to be counted or she's going to be in her infancy. So once we know that information, then we need to go and put that into a table for comparison or put it in your mind. With that information in mind, we can then go back to look at that John that was over on Ancestry.com. So when we look at John, remember we came over here and we looked at his record and there were these individuals in categories. So now we're going to go back to the, in, the potential information or what we suspect should appear in the 1840 census and then put the possible lineup and then see do we have any overlap and could this entry match up. So let's zoom in and analyze this further. So this is what we have established previously and this is a potential information from that ancestry record and let's see how they line up. So John, 39, that checks up. Eveline, 38, that checks out. Eliza, 16, okay, that is actually needs to be um, considered not actually lining up because is she 14? Did they get the numbers wrong? So we're kind of uncertain about this. Asa lines up. Richard lines up and Mary's lined up. So the question I now have is, uh, is this the right family? Because Joanna's not the right age. She's a little bit too old. Um, and then there's this extra female in there. 
Now, what are some of your thoughts as to why there could be an extra female in the record? I have some thoughts and I'm going to share those over in my blog show notes, but let's dive back into the other possibilities that other town leaflets was um, in the location to kind of see could this have been the other one with where his middle name was Jay. But before we do that, I also want to make sure that there wasn't a mistake in what was extracted from the record. We always want to check, um, dive into the records. And so I'm looking for John Townley. So here I'm looking at John Townley and notice these are nice, clear, crisp numbers. And then sure enough, in this female 10 to 15, I do have a two. Um, so there doesn't seem to be a mistake. Um, so now what do we do? So let's go back and look at the results and see some other options. So here is a Nuan John J. Townley. I, I don't know really how to say that. So let's look at the record and see what's going on here. It's very difficult to read, but hopefully you can see on screen. Let me get my little handy writing tool, put it out of the way right here. If you see this name right here, it's George, George Townley. And then this name right here is the one that's causing problems. This is a J. And this is Townley. So what is this name? Well, this is Major. Can you see it? All right, so Major. Um, let's go back and look at the index for Major. We can see that somebody did put a correction into the field right here. So he has two males, 15 through 19, a male, 30 to through 39, a female, five under five, two fe a female, five through nine, a female 15 through, she, he's got a lot more females going on and then a woman who seems to be younger. And this is the information that I extracted about the major Townley. And this is the information that is extracted for John Townley. And let's go over and review that this checks out. So they both get a positive here. But this one is a negative because the female's not old enough. Um, remember, she's at the upper end of this age group. There is, they have uh, two males, 15 through 19. Let me go ahead and check off what works. And this checks off. They have a plus one on the males, but this one is accurate. Now, Eliza was actually 16. And this one caused me a lot of question because not only is Eliza recorded at a younger age than she should be, but there's an extra female that I'm not sure about. Now, this one does check out. So, so far, there's one check mark going on over here. And this is a question mark, but it has three check marks over on this side. Now, we have, uh, they're missing a male, and they have the right male, and they both have a female. So all in all, this one has one, two, three, four, five votes in its favor, and this has one, two, three. So right now, I'm going to rule out the major entry and keep the John entry. But before I say this is definitely my John, I need to use that data mining theory of going through all of the possible Johns all across the country at that time period to see if that's a possibility. If there's stronger evidence, then yeah, this could be him. Now, what if he's hiding in someone else's household? That's a theory. That is definitely something that could be a possibility, a reality. For, the, for, for right now, because of his age, because of how many children he has, and this seems to line up, one of the things I can do is look in Cincinnati and see how many townlies are in Cincinnati and what their ages might be. And maybe that can give me a little more evidence as to maybe this is my John. Notice I keep saying maybe, 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 because that's the nature of genealogy. It's a lot of maybes. 
If you're enjoying all of the tips and tricks that I have, you will definitely enjoy some of the virtual conferences that we coordinate throughout the years. Be sure to check out familyhistoryfanatics.com slash eConference. The link will be in the description for when our next conference goes live and be sure to sign up to hear from experts from around the genealogy industry. Now, in order to try to figure out is John hiding with another household? I'm going to look for all of the townlies that are living in Cincinnati or in Ohio at this time period and start figuring out could he be really hiding somewhere else with his large family. So let's find out. We're at Ancestry.com and we're going to change some search terms. And this time we're going to leave the surname field blank. We're going to do the same thing with the Tanley that I did earlier and we got to 35 results. I'm going to limit to Cincinnati, Ohio, exact to this place and click search. There are three Tanleys in Cincinnati, Ohio. We've already found out that he is 39 and he is in his 30s. And this John, the oldest male is 30 to 39. There isn't another male about John's age in the Townley's area. So, it, or at least in the household. So, then what? Well, let's get out of just Cincinnati. Let's go to the county level. We're not picking up any extra Townley's. Now we're looking at Ohio and well, this is not likely his family. It doesn't have his wife and his extra children. This one is another male, 30 to 39. So that's likely this William. This is a Mrs. And she's 40 to 49. But the male is 20 to 29. That's not old enough. And so on and on and on, you're checking off and ruling people out. And that actually is part of the genealogy process. You don't know if it's about your ancestor until you eliminated other possibilities. And so I'm thinking that this actually might be my ancestor. In this time period, there's really only three townlies. And it's often said in a uh, county or even in a city, when you find people with the same surname, they could be related. So I'm going to make note of this major and this George and keep them in my research plan to investigate further. I believe I've conducted a reasonably exhaustive search for John Townley, ruling out those 22 hints in the initial search in the 1840 census. So now I'm going to go over to 1830 census, utilizing the information that I had from 1840, moving 10 years back in time. I'm gonna put in John Townley and I'm gonna start with Cincinnati. So I've typed in John Townley and we're going to restrict it to Cincinnati and press search. I have no results, so what am I gonna do? Well, let's go back and change our search and take off the name Townley. Let's limit it to just Hamilton County. And I'm still not getting anything. Well. The enumerators and their handwriting back in that time period, surely somebody's gonna show up. And wouldn't you have it, I have a Nathaniel Townsley, and he is living in Cincinnati. He's 30 to 39, so this isn't John's father because he's not the right age. So now what? Well, now we're gonna go back and we're gonna search for John in New Jersey. And you should also note that we're not seeing George or Major. Now they're in their 20s. All three men are in their 20s, but none of them are in Cincinnati. So let's go and search New Jersey. So I am going to look for all townies in Elizabeth, New Jersey, and I'm going to restrict it to just Elizabeth, New Jersey. In the previous video said that he was likely from Elizabeth, New Jersey, and Elizabeth, New Jersey in 1830 was in Essex County. There's a boundary change later, but for now it's Essex County. And so I limited to just Essex County because I want to pick up all of the townies at that time period and then narrow down if I need to even further. So let's dive into what we see. So there are 50 results on this page. If we start searching for people that are in Elizabeth, 
there are seven and the names are starting to sound a little bit familiar but what i want to do is i want to go to the one that says john so we have a john and he's an elizabeth and he has five people which that's what i'm expecting him to have and when i look in on the profile i see this information let me extract that over to the slideshow. So here is the John that we found in the 1840 census, and this is the potential John that we found in 1830. And would these match up nicely? This one matches up well. The male matches up because he was kind of on that other end. And because the age group seems he could be you know, on that top end here and the bottom end there. We have two females, 10 through 14, and two females, 0 to 5. What have we figured out? It's entirely possible I have an extra female that I didn't know about in family records. So should I chop everything and start trying to figure out who she is? At this time, I'm going to say no because it's not helping me get back to the answer. My ultimate question right now is who are are the parents of John Townley. So you remember that research plan? And you remember all those goals? Whenever you stumble across a new question, put it as another goal. Who is this extra female in John Townley's household? And what can I find out about her? But all in all, when I look at the information, it really does look like it matches up. So now I need to go back to the results over on Ancestry to decide, does anybody else match? Can anybody else be John Townley, the one I'm looking for? So what I did is I extracted the information so you can see on screen what I've found. You have the name, the number of people in their household, and the likely head of household's age, male, and then their age. Now quickly, I can rule out Joshua Townley because he's too old and what I also found out is one of these Williams was recorded twice so really there's um these individuals still left to investigate so I'm not going to be able to solve uh whether this man right here is my John Townley I'm going to leave it as a clue and we're going to come back to further information in future videos but what do you think is another question we should be asking ourselves? Is there an effing in him town Lee in 1830? And if so, where is he? Well, I'm going to leave that as some homework for you to do to keep this video short. I'm going to update my research plan and leave that information over on the show notes blog post that is the companion to this video. So you can see what I have found and we can continue this research journey together. So if you have any other questions on researching early census records, if you saw some clues that I missed, or if you have some things I should have searched, then you need to go to the comment section and we need to have that discussion. If you need to catch up to the Brick Wall Busting series, or you want to continue on the journey, make sure you check out that playlist right there. And if you're all caught up and still want to learn more, then check out that video, which was specifically selected for your interest.